dad, when dad came back from Wichita, he uh, told mom, we're going to move to Wichita. But he didn't have a house. He had to go back and, and try to find a home for us. Well, he left mother, Wendell, me, and you. And Larry. There. Well, Larry was born even a little later, and I haven't touched no. on that. No, I'm already around by that. Yeah, 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 yeah. I know you're yeah. around, yeah. but I didn't tell about it in, yeah. Yeah. in the story. Yeah. So, uh, well, Larry's around. He, he was born in 43. What? Yeah. You had mentioned Two. about moving from the three houses, yeah. and then did you move out north of Plummerville yeah. to get away from the river? Ball knob. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. When, yeah. When, yeah, after we were flooded out those three times, yeah. Dad went outside, which was hill country of Plummerville, mm -hmm. and bought an old log house that had been, looked like 1865, mm. and the, <clears throat> the stuff in the cracks and everything. And it had three rooms on it, but with it came, I don't remember the acreage layer. 80 acres. 80 acres, right, huh. right there. Mm. And evidently he had accumulated enough money to pay down on that. And we had some happy times in this old log house. And it was literally a three room house. And with us staying there. And Wendell was the oldest one home. Well, I was, I was uh, 15, I think, about 15. And Wendell was about 13. And he took care of the horse and the cows, did the milking and and we had mother in the garden, and uh, and dad had, when he bought the house, he wanted to make it a fruit farm. So he bought a hundred fruit trees. Hmm. But when this job offer came up in Wichita, these fruit trees had not come in. But they did come in later, and he instructed Wendell and me hmm. to plant those trees when when we when they came in, lest they die, mm -hmm. because he had ordered them from Stark Brothers, and many Stark. of you are familiar with that post that proper uh -oh. that company. But anyway, Wendell and I planted a hundred fruit trees and made an orchard there. And Wendell was pretty. He even the daddy had instructed him how to row, row them up, huh. and they were there, and probably. Sixty years later, when when I made a visit, sixty years later, which was what three years ago? Well, even this sum we didn't go out there this summer, did we? No, but past summer. But there was a few of those trees still standing, huh. and they had said it had been a prolific fruit fruit yeah. garden. Were they all the same fruit by chance? Or uh, no, they were right? mixed fruit. Yeah. You know, apples, pear, peaches, pears and plums. But uh, that old homesake now, it was pretty obsolete and I was sort of embarrassed to bring girlfriends home because, you know, it was, we had a bed in the living room and, and there, you just sat outside and visited. And they did, the boys in the family did come finally and build a screen porch all across the back where three beds were put. Mm. And that loosened up the other. Did the boys just sleep out there in the Yeah, the time? boys, in no, the no, we slept all winter long. They put, they put uh, canvas around to let down in the winter. Hmm. Over the just screen? Over that, the screen. That really make it warm? Uh -huh. it? Yeah, it made it much warmer. Yeah. Uh -huh. <laughs> Juanita, we've uh, been talking about the 30s and 40s, but let's go back to the 30s again because, you know, you're the only one that has uh, the, the history of the 30s. Uh, thinking about some of the 30s, perhaps you've... Uh, We've skipped some of the things, and you've remembered some other things that uh, were interesting to you that you recall during the 30s. What are some of those things that you do recall now about some of the 30s since we've been talking about it? Well, what, what I probably haven't mentioned was uh, the fact that we were poor. We, I did mention we were poor, but we were a happy uh, family. Yeah. Dad and Mom saw that we were happy. They, they never, I never heard them speak ill toward each other or anything like that. Our houses were simple. Everybody's house was simple, but if you had a linoleum on your rug, you were blessed. Linoleum on your floor. I mean, on your floor. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, uh, not, not a rug, yeah. but, <clears throat> and it was the women's duty usually or privilege 
every spring to do a spring house cleaning. And they would buy these articles one at a time. Maybe fresh uh, linoleums for the kitchen, which took the most wear. And the kids loved the linoleum because it was cool in the summer. Mm. And I can remember us laying on the linoleum taking our naps. And, uh, and of course the women would spruce up the houses as best they could and the neighbors would help them uh, doing that. One uh, story that I left out <clears throat> was that when I was, I, it was, I think I had started the school and uh, Daddy had built us a what we called a flying jenny. It was an old stump sitting out in, in the side yard and he had put a big bolt through a board like a, a one by 10, 12 or something like that. It was about this thick and bolted it in that stump <clears throat> and made us kids what we called a flying jenny. It was like a merry-go-round. Mm, yeah. And but it, we could just push it, and so I was out there. Uh, Dale was, uh, and Dale, Bill, and me were. They were pushing me around. Uh, Bill was on my side to level the weight out with Dale. D Bill was my third brother, and so they were just going gee whiz, and I was hanging on like this to that thing. And Dad started his truck up in the side yard. He was fixing to go make a delivery. And he said, Dale, come and go with me and help me. Well, Dale turned that loose. And I went to the ground, kerchunk. No, Bill went to the ground, kerchunk, and bolted me off of that and broke, broke this arm right in half. Huh. And, well, that delayed the word, wood delivery. And they took me to Dr. Hutchins, who was the one doctor we had. And this arm was, this part was over here, this part was over here. And Dr. Hutchins, without anything, took those and squared them up right there. And then put a, a cast of stuff on it up to here. Huh. And we're talking about a six-year-old. Hello. Uh-huh. Hello. And no... <laughs> No anesthetic, no nothing. <laughs> but it was quite hurtful. And but you were about it, six years, so you, this is about in, still in the early 30s. Yeah. Yes. Now, what, what, was it a compound fracture? It was a fracture, and I have a scar, a deep scar right there from where the bones yeah. worked out, yeah. and mm. mom and dad had to attend that. That's mm. Medical problem was, I said we had lots of malaria because of the water standing, mosquitoes, and a lot of people had that. We as kids, not you and the, not you and Larry, mm -hmm. but we were kept at home and we would have measles, chicken pox, and whooping cough all in the same time. Because of the close communion, we, we couldn't go to school, but, but because we were in the same household, we just took one after another from the other. Mother would just put us in a bed, all of us, and take care of us that way. Hmm. And you didn't have shots. We did take typhoid shots at school. Mm -hmm. The government made typhoid shots uh, to ward off typhoid fever. Malaria was bad enough. And I can remember Bill, this picture that you all were, we were talking about last night, taking with the garden gate as yeah. a background. Yeah. Bill had malaria then, and he had it all summer, and they thought he was going to die. But huh. if you look in that picture, you can see a very scrawny little guy What's at that, that time. Was, he was maybe 11. I've, yeah. never, I've never heard about malaria being, shall we say, rampant? Would that be oh, it was rampant. In that part yeah. of the world? Because of the time. mosquitoes, yeah, the, the low water, water, and then the consistency of every year it happening with, with the Arkansas River. Yeah. Hmm. And of course, that you know that Arkansas River still flows full today. Yeah. And you know, I look. I think of malaria. I think of jungle stuff. Yeah, malaria. Sure. Well, yeah you do. <laughs> yeah. But no, malaria was a very. And as far as I know, there wasn't a shot or anything. But as far as I know, Bill was the only one who ever got malaria yeah. during these times. Mm -hmm. uh, <clears throat> well, you mentioned something about shoes a while ago. Well, 
when I started the school, mom thought I needed a new pair of shoes, and I thought it would be, uh, and I was excited, and she said, Roy, take Juanita and get her a pair of shoes, and I thought it was, you know, for school, the, the school type, where you uh, brown and polish with an old dauber oh, yeah. shoe polish kit, and uh, and we, we tried to keep our shoes nice, and you only had two pair, your Sunday pair and your uh, play pair. Hmm. And uh, you took them off when you came home. Well, Dad took me to a general store. It was a drug store. It was a, they had cloth. They had groceries. And that was the way most of the grocery stores were. And, uh, and, and you know, barrels of peanuts and barrels of this, that. Well, he took me back there, and he tried on a few with me, and... and they didn't fit or something. But anyway, he finally came across a pair called Roman sandals. They were a black patent high top shoe that used a button horn to button those things up. And there was about five or six buttons that you had to use this to button them up. Hmm. And he put those on me and I felt like Princess, Princess what? Die. Yeah, yeah. yeah Princess yeah. Die. Yeah, yeah. And I said, you can you're buying these for me, Daddy? And he said, "Well, yes." Mm. And so, I wore those shoes out of the out of the store, prouder than punch. Uh. But I'm sure I took them home when I got home. But on top of that, he went to the the bar, a coffee bar, the what they had with big mirrors behind them, yeah. and bought me a Coca Cola. Mm -hmm. And I had never drank a Coca Cola. Your and, it, Coke. and it was in a little bottle, the old-fashioned, the squeezed-in waste, you know, mm -hmm. the yeah, little yeah, glass yeah, bottle. Yeah, That's yeah. the only way they sold them. Six-ounce, yeah. six-ounce yeah, bottle. Six, bottle. Yeah. All six. right, now, do you remember how old you were? I was uh, probably in, getting start to go to school, about six. Oh, if yeah. you were five or six, let's say. Yeah. And the reason I'm I'm trying to nail the date down, that was about 1933. Yeah. Because... That would be right. But uh, you were born 27, you say? Yeah. So that was probably about 1933 when that happened. 33, 34. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. yeah. <clears throat> Our, we had a, a large yard where we had this large house. And uh, uh, on the back part of it was a large screen porch as, as wide as the house was. As all... If you will go back today to England, Arkansas, you will find, if you find many older houses left, and there are still lots, you will find each one of them has a back screen porch mm -hmm. because that was their summer living room, like our patios, our family mm -hmm. home, yeah. except it was outside. I mean, exposed to the, you know, and all of them are screened to keep the mosquitoes out and the bugs you can set out there yeah. with a, uh, a light at night. What I'm, what I'm hearing, Nita, I'm not sure that I was aware of this, that uh, uh, we were not the poorest family in England. No, no. You know, maybe, no. certainly not the richest, no. but kind of middle class there. Yeah. And so, uh, so did something economically happen, you know, to, to bring that down, that we were, that we got a little poorer as life went on, or as you moved to Plummerville or whatever? Well, it wasn't that we were poor, but jobs became unheard of to find okay. with the depression wiping out the you know the yeah. stock market and yeah. all of that uh, dad was so tired and of course working against a handicap he would have been uh, you know and no longer vegetables mm -hmm. and and uh, was supplying enough money for a growing family mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and so that's when he decided to uh, search out more work when we when we got out of the Portland moved out of the Portland Bottoms to Wichita, uh, I mean, from the hill country. Right, right. And, but... Uh, you said something a while ago I thought was interesting. You said that during this time, you all discovered a fruit that you had never oh. seen before. During the Depression, we had commodities. All right. Every month, the, uh, the truck would come around, or you would, could, could go down and sign up for commodities. And I think that's what Dad and Mom did. Okay. Because Dad would bring large boxes of, of everything home. Beans, of course, they, they, we had lots of beans. And yeah. Mother cooked a lot of beans, which was good, yeah. with ham hock. And uh, was hearty for children. But Dad would go and get, 
get these large boxes of commodities. They would have pounds and pounds of cheese in it, good cheese, hmm. uh, coffee, sugar, flour, uh, some meat, dried canned meat, Spam. Mm -hmm. uh, I believe Spam was really becoming the that's thing. That's a newfangled thing. Yeah. yeah, that's right. Yeah. And fruit. He would bring home apples and oranges and these strange things that we'd never eaten called grapefruit. Huh. And we thought, what do you do with these? And uh, Mom and Dad didn't know. They hadn't been exposed to them either. Now, that sounds strange to you all, but... Uh, it wasn't at that time. Mm -hmm. But we were trying to eat them because we ate anything. We weren't persnickety about food. No. and uh, <clears throat> But we were eating them, peeling them like an orange, and uh -huh. eating the bitter section. <laughs> Until someone, a neighbor or something, says, Oh no, Mildred, my mom's name. Cut them in half and dig out the meat with a spoon, <laughs> which is what we did. We discovered that, and then did, Dad couldn't keep them on hand <laughs> yeah. with us kids. But that was our first uh, dealings with commodity. But they helped yeah. a lot with those things that we could not raise. You know, I suppose a lot of people got commodities during those times. Everybody, yeah. everybody that wanted or that signed up, you had to sign your name yeah. for them. Now you said something about cheese. I have seen in antique stores these big round wooden, they're circular things, yeah, and yeah. I heard that cheese used to come in those things. Is that how you all got cheese? No, it, it, we didn't get, we got that kind of cheese, but it would be like Velveeta is now, okay. except five pound boxes. Oh my stars. Five pound boxes, <laughs> yeah. Big boxes like that. Huh. So mother cooked a lot of macaroni and cheese yeah. and this and that, and it was good. Yeah. And that was good. One thing I mentioned that how the neighbors help each other, the children played across the street with each other. We played with the black kids just like we did the white kids. Huh. And we didn't sense any, they were just neighbors. Yeah. And mother had a, <clears throat> a lady who helped her. And you'd think, well, if she could have help, you know, you shouldn't have been poor. Well, wasn't that at all. But the black people would, would help for meals yeah. for any meals that you offered and um, uh, mother had this one little lady uh, that lived behind her and if mother needed help with when the kids got sick per se uh, mother would spend her time tending to us and then maybe she had a big supper to fix for dad and the boys you know the work boys but uh, she would go pin a, a white cloth on the, the line on the clothesline. Mm -hmm. We didn't know what dryers were. We hung the clothes out. Mother washed on a rub board, and uh, it was mainly overalls, and mine and her things could be pretty easy taken care of. But lines of, of heavy overalls, everything denim. But uh, she would put a line, a white cloth, to tell this lady to come and I need help today. That was the signal. That was the signal. Mm -hmm. And this lady watched for that line every day if Miss Mildred needed something. And you say this is a black lady. A, a little black lady. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. And she would come and help mother clean up if they had been canning that day or to take care of the, the kids or whatever. Now, Neela, this, but, I think this is interesting because, you know, we as old, uh, younger kids, we'd always heard about segregation, that the blacks were segregated from uh, the white. But <coughs> you're telling us that you guys were a neighborhood. We we were, they usually lived in their own neighborhood yeah. sometimes. They moved across the street, as I have black neighbors here and there down, down 8th Street. But uh, uh, we respected them and they respected me. That was the time of the back door entrance. Yeah. That was the time that they did not drink at a fountain where you did. They brought their own water. Mm. They, when they was in the fields, they treated us with respect. Mm. And they respected my grandfather and my dad and mother. And my mother and daddy and grand, grandfather respected them back. Yeah. In fact, my grandfather, our grandfather, was a great philanthropic a fella toward the black people. Mm -hmm. When he had extra crops, and I'm talking about 20 acres of watermelon, 
uh, 15 acres of cantaloupe, popcorn, corn on the cob, uh, I said watermelons, didn't yeah. He would gather that up in his big trucks, take it in to town, and give it to the blacks. Mm -hmm. And the blacks would, he would be there to help dispose, said, take, take what you want. If he thought one guy was taking too much, well, he would stop that, yeah, you know. Yeah. Speaking but, of the fields, did you ever work in the fields? Yes, we, we worked in the fields. Uh, I was kind of little then, and, and I didn't do much, but uh, Wendell was, we chopped cotton, and that was, that was endless fields. I thought I'd never want to see a cotton field again because they were, you couldn't even see the end of the rows. But Papa would go and get in, get a carload of Negroes and bring them out to work and to either chop cotton or if it was harvest time to pick cotton. And uh, when we, we did either one, then he saw in Wendell and me perfect little water carriers. Mm -hmm. And I meant we had to go to the pump and pump out the water. And we had, well, we weren't big enough to carry five pounds. We carried two large buckets, lard buckets, oh. as I think they're eight pounds. Okay. Uh, like this, empty lard. Wendell would carry two, I would carry two. And we would take water to the Negroes as they worked. Yeah. Mm. And they were very gracious, but sometimes because of their eating, they would bring s crackers and sardines in a can and eat those any time of the day. Yeah. And they were very thirsty. Yeah. And they would, and they drank out of this bucket. We didn't even have a dip. They just drank out of the bucket. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> wasn't, that, wasn't that nice? Yeah. And, but I just got so tired of that job. I thought if I ever get out of a cotton field, I'll never, <laughs> never come again. back. That's uh, right. Well, you didn't but, chop any cotton yourself, no. though. Huh? But the moral to that was that we did not hate the Negroes. Yeah. No. But they stayed, They kept their place on their side of town. And it was, if they saw me as a kid walking down the sidewalk, they would walk out. Oh, well, too and bad. yeah, it was too bad. That was a different, but that was, different time. Yeah, yeah, it was a different time. Yeah. I didn't tell you about how a lesson in honesty that we were thought that when all, just the five of us, <coughs> of course we had neighbor, neighbor kids played all the time together, and this was summer, and all the neighborhoods kids were in our yard playing. And uh, we had big trees to climb up, and it was fun. So one day we were playing, and we, uh, uh, heard, we saw Mom come out and say something to Dad. Dad was around there because of his maybe had been to a doctor or something, but uh, we saw, and Dad said, whistled. Daddy always whistled like this, you know, put those fingers and whistled. That means, come here, let's gather. So we gathered around, and uh, Dad said, I want all you kids to get up here. And there was probably eight or ten of us, that included our five, and uh, about that time, uh, we heard the police siren, and here came the black and white police car, yeah, right up into our front yard, scared us to death, and we respected Chief Wayne, was his name, huh. Chief Wayne, and we got there, and we saw him and Daddy conferring, and all of us were wide-eyed and, and uh, afraid, w nervous, and uh, Chief Wayne was a big kind of a stocky guy and with two guns on his side and a big badge and he staggered up to dad and dad uh, said something to him and uh, then daddy said okay kids this is a problem mom has got five dollars missing out of her cabinet and it's just happened it was there a while ago and uh, she either had been in another room or something. And it's got to be right here. Somebody knows something where that is. And I call Chief Wayne. And I want you to know that uh, 
I wrote this down for my own keeping. We were scared to death. He explained that $5 was missing from mom's kitchen cabinet. And I meant this is grocery money for quite a while, staples and all of that. And uh, he questioned, he questioned us. Anybody know about this? Nobody know. Explaining that whoever took this money after no results from the answers, he explained they would go to jail or they would be hanged. <laughs> now the policeman said this, whoever's got that money was going to go to jail or you're going to be hanged. And we had an open porch like this and there was open rafters going across back and forth. Chief Daddy had a rope in his hand he threw that rope up over that, oh. brought it down here, had a noose on it, lesson in honesty. And nobody still came forward. And when nobody spoke up, Chief Wayne said, I'm giving everybody tomorrow to come up with that money. Well, the next day, Mrs. MacArthur, the girl that took me to school, her mother, I lived across the street. They had a son named J.D. lived right across. Mrs. MacArthur came across with her apron on, with tears in her eyes, crying. Mildred, I found this money in J.D.'s, uh, JD's bed or in his pants pocket or something, uh. and he couldn't understand. Well, the money had been found, but and she brought it back, and Chief Wayne evidently checked back the next day to emphasize this lesson. But Dad put that noose around Bill's <laughs> neck. Oh, uh, say what again? Around <laughs> Bill's neck. Why? You mean our brother Billy? Billy brother. Uh huh. Why did you put it around his neck? To emphasize, this is going to be the this, penalty. This is serious stuff. Yeah. Oh, and he thought it best to put around Bill's. Uh, neck to well, emphasize that's why Billy turned out the way he did. And I said, and that's the next day word got out, and Ma, he gave Mom the five dollars, crying that she'd found it in JD's pocket and admitted taking a lesson of honesty. I will never forget. <laughs> no, I was not. JD grew up a troubled boy and was in and out of jail all his active life, and but the families remained friends for many years, but yet kept watch on JD. Oh yeah.